Hi everybody, Jennifer Schaus here coming to you live today from Washington, D.C. Thank you for joining us in our webinar Wednesday series. In 2023, as you know, we're covering the top 40 U.S. federal government contractors and we're going sequentially through the list. Um, all of our webinars are recorded and complimentary. You can find them on our website where they are organized by category or topic, uh, or you can hop over to our YouTube channel uh, and download any of the 600 plus uh, webinars there. If you're looking for any of the PowerPoints from the past uh, webinars that we've done, they're over on the slideshare.net site. Uh, that is a free uh, platform to download PowerPoints, and I believe you can log in with your LinkedIn credentials there. A quick blurb about us. Uh, we are based in downtown Washington, D.C., and we work with revenue generating federal government contractors. Our primary service uh, is focused on contract vehicles, primarily helping companies get onto the GSA schedule. Some of our other services are listed there on the screen. You can find more out about our services on our website. Uh, in the event that you're selling to federal government contractors, um, we offer a variety of uh, platforms to advertise your services, including uh, these actual webinars. You can put on a webinar with us. You can advertise in our newsletter. Um, and we also have an event coming up that offers sponsorship opportunities. Um, speaking of events and webinars, we're going to run through some uh, specialty webinars and events that are coming up. In the near and not so near future in February of 2024, uh, as well as uh, later this summer, we're going to be talking about marketing um, directly to the primes as well as to the government. Uh, these classes are exactly the same, so you can sign up for one or the other. Uh, they are being hosted through our friends over at the Virginia PTAC. Uh, the PSA schedule class is coming up in about uh, two and a half weeks on Thursday, June 15th. If you missed that, you can catch it again, uh, the same exact class on September 14th. Again, those are um, the same class and being hosted by our friends over at the Virginia PTAC. Got another webinar coming up uh, with my GovWatch. Uh, it's focused on finding opportunities within SAM.gov but really being cognizant of your NAICS code and making sure that you're finding opportunities that are directed, um, that are specifically for your company and what you do. Uh, for example, as listed here on this slide, 38% of NAICS codes are incorrectly assigned. So you wanna make sure that you are uh, finding the opportunities for your company and that you're not missing anything. Uh, my GovWatch will lead the entire presentation that day. Again, it's Friday, June 9th, it's complimentary. Uh, and you'll be able to catch the recording if that date and time do not work for you. Our next uh, networking event is Monday, July 17th. It's over at the Kennedy Center. We expect between two and 300 federal government contractors. Um, the registration link is there on your screen. It's also on our website under the event section. Uh, from the government side, we will have the uh, Veteran Affairs Department, as well as the SBA, Department of Defense, National Guard, and Department of Education. As more sponsors and government uh, confirm with us, we will announce that and update the slides accordingly. Uh, we want to thank GovForce, Federal Compass, and Sahori Insurance for being our sponsors of the event. Now for our webinar sponsors, uh, this is what makes our webinars complimentary so that you don't have to pay. Um, we wanna thank uh, our friends at GovEvents. They're the premier platform for posting events related to government and government contracting. You can find all of our webinars and our events on GovEvents.com as well as recordings from our past 600 plus webinars. We also wanna thank Tom Johnson and his team at Set Aside Alert. They're the go-to publication for contracting opportunities for small, women-owned, veteran-owned, hub zone 8A firms. Visit setasidealert.com for more information. The Fairfax Economic Development Authority has an online calendar of events and webinars, and we want to thank them for posting our events and webinars on their calendar. The GovSpend FedMind platform is what powers the data in our webinar series this year. They've also provided uh, data for us over the last several years. Uh, they're the leading trusted source of data, analytics, and insight for government contractors. 
They integrate data from 18 federal data sources and sets and create a single database that places key data uh, at your fingertips. The platform now provides contract opportunities within thousands of entities at federal, state, local, and education organizations. Again, we want to thank GovSpend and FedMind for providing the data in the webinar series this year and in previous years. The uh, Greater Reston Chamber of Commerce has a monthly government contracting council meeting. Uh, it allows you to network with your peers, learn about upcoming events and opportunities, and help shape the future of programming. Uh, the meeting takes place the fourth Tuesday of each month at 8.30 a.m. at the Greater Reston Chamber of Commerce. Uh, the next meeting is Tuesday, June 27th. Uh, you can email Alicia if you need more, informa more information or to get the Zoom link. Um, so thanks again to the Greater Ruston Chamber of Commerce. The Virginia PTAC at George Mason University offers free one-on-one -on -one counseling to established government contracting firms in Virginia on federal, state, and local procurement topics. If you're interested in learning more, please use the links provided to explore services, review homework recommendations, register for live trainings, and find useful links to agencies and other self-directed learning. Online resources and group trainings are free with no restriction on business location. One-on-one -on -one, um, counseling is, however, limited to uh, eligible client companies. Bidspeed. Uh, Bidspeed helps and you win. Find opportunities from every federal, state, local, and public source in the U.S. Bidspeed can help you find teaming partners, incumbent point of contact, expiring contracts, and can also provide you with a compliance matrix and proposal templates. Bidspeed is an official partner of the U.S. SBA's 7J Management and Technical Assistance Program. Get, start, get started today at fedbidspeed.com. The Federal Business Council. Uh, events are the ultimate engagement channel to bring government and industry together. 68% of government personnel report that they attend more than one event each year. FBC has worked with government and industry for 45 plus years to create gatherings where ideas are shared and to help government achieve its goals. This includes agency industry days, cybersecurity symposiums, tech expos, and offsite meetings. FBC provides full life cycle meeting planning and event management. With over 5,000 meetings under their belt, FBC has the experience, systems, and personnel to make your next event exceptional. Learn more at fbcinc.com. And last but not least, uh, Gov Events. Are you looking for a relevant government event where you can connect with the community? Sign up for your free membership on govevents.com to find the latest events that matter to you and near you. Conferences, trade shows, virtual events, webinars, and networking opportunities are available at your fingertips. Plus, explore upcoming sponsorship opportunities. You can even access on-demand events so you can stay on top of the latest trends and best practices in the industry. And you can post your own events for free to further expand your reach. Uh, all of this and more with your free Gov Events membership. Okay, um, a little bit about the series and our schedule, and then we're going to dig into Sandia National Labs. Um, again, as I mentioned, all of our webinars are complimentary and recorded. You can find the recordings on our website as well as on our YouTube channel. Uh, the links are there. And if you're looking just for the PowerPoint, that can be found on slideshare.net where you can log in with your LinkedIn credentials. Uh, today we are uh, cruising through these uh, top 40. We're at number 16 today, which is Sandia National Labs. If you're looking to sign up for the remaining webinars, the link is highlighted there at the top of the screen. Uh, which is found on the tab called Top 40 on our website. Everything in red has been recorded. Again, you can find it on our website. Uh, you can also find it on the YouTube channel. Uh, what remains is what you see here on the screen. We will close out the season on Wednesday, November 15th. We do, however, skip the week of 4th of July. Uh, the reason that we are uh, focused uh, for a brief moment here on subcontracting is because we're assuming that most people are looking at these large businesses as um, potential avenues for subcontracting. So if that's the case, then uh, we would like to draw your attention over to both the FAR and the DFARS, uh, which are the rules and the regulations that the contracting officers must abide by when awarding contracts or uh, looking for sources of, uh, of supply. 
the FAR uh, applies to the entire federal government. And then the DFARS is focused obviously on contracts related to um, defense contracting. There are FAR flow down clauses that do apply to subcontractors. So don't think that uh, by being a subcontractor, you're not going to have to uh, comply with um, any of these regulations. You certainly will. Uh, if you want to find more out about that, um, meaning the subcontracting policies and procedures, you would uh, be directed over here to the FAR Part 44, uh, or in the case of defense contracting, uh, to the DFARS Part 44. Uh, both of those take you to the YouTube uh, link to the webinars that we completed on those uh, in 2020 and 2021. We've also conducted some other webinars on subcontracting. We kicked off this season with the uh, webinar listed there at the top of the screen that was divided into six um, separate sessions uh, covering everything from market research all the way through to compliance. Um, in 2021, uh, we did a series on subcontracting within um, all of the 15 federal departments. So we looked at the prime contractors and various subcontracting opportunities within those departments. Um, and then we've got uh, over 30 webinars on more of the strategic and tactical topics of subcontracting. All the links are there. They're on our website as well. Uh, best practices, obviously you want to focus on what you do and do well. Uh, try not to be everything to everybody. Um, if there are opportunities where you provide value, those should be the RFPs and RFQs that you should be pursuing. And value can be defined as anything from a unique skill set to a lower price or having a relationship and perhaps past performance within a certain department or agency. Uh, maybe you're providing a complimentary service to the prime contractor. Uh, once you have identified those primes, um, do as much homework on them as possible. That includes all of the websites listed here at the bottom of the screen, SAM, USA Spending, FPDS, uh, but many people these days have subscriptions to any of the um, paid data aggregators that exist. Again, do your homework. This is the, uh, the most important part that will serve you well. The more research that you do up front, the more targeted and strategic that you'll be and the more narrow your focus will be. Um, you won't be uh, distracted by opportunities that really aren't a good fit for your business. Um, once you have uh, defined what it is you do well and you've done that research for the opportunity as well as a potential partner company, you then want to make sure that you've customized your capability statement for that opportunity so that it is uh, on paper and showcases you in the best way possible and, um, and provides value to the potential partner that you may be working with. Uh, when you're at that, when you've got to that point, you then, uh, I think it's fairly safe to somewhat pull the trigger on registering as a small business vendor on the company website, uh, followed up with a message on LinkedIn to the small business liaison officer who can be kind of a, a helpful um, person or point of contact to get to the program manager if you don't know who he or she is. Um, you also want to take some time to sign up for their newsletter, look at the events that they're attending, what associations are they uh, a member of, where are they speaking, where can you find an opportunity to actually shake their hands. Okay, uh, now that we've covered uh, some of the basics, uh, we're going to talk today about Sandia National Laboratories. Uh, this is a unique one uh, because they are somewhat of a quasi-government uh, entity, uh, but we'll talk about their, their structure a little bit later. Uh, they obviously have enough revenue to show up as the number 16 or the 16th uh, largest um, revenue generating uh, company here uh, in our top 40 list. So let's dig in on the basic info. We've got the company website. Obviously, it ends in .gov, so that should tell you something. Um, and again, we'll talk about their structure in a, in a moment. Uh, they're obviously not publicly traded in the past for this series. We have been including the um, stock price for any of our uh, publicly traded businesses. Uh, if you want to work with them, uh, there's ample information on the website about uh, doing business with Sandia National Labs. And uh, here's their UEI information from sim.gov. Um, they show 
there as for-profit organization, even though they're a .gov. Um, so let's uh, go ahead and dig in a little bit further on LinkedIn. Uh, you've got their page there uh, shown as, uh, as a Department of Energy uh, laboratory uh, focused on defense and space manufacturing. Uh, I believe they actually do have more than 11,000 employees these days, uh, but quite a few uh, followers. Uh, this is going to be a, an interesting presentation today, or, or perhaps not, um, maybe a little dry. On the civilian side, this is really all that we're looking at is Department of Defense, where their revenue has increased year over year from 2019. Um, it does not look like uh, COVID or the pandemic affected them at all. Uh, in fact, they probably um, were conducting some research related to the pandemic. Uh, if you look at the number for 2023, keep in mind this is just a partial um, snapshot of what's happening uh, for that fiscal year. So October, November, December, January, February, March, uh, April, and May is probably not captured there. So uh, we still have several months to go. So my guesstimate here is that they will probably surpass their fiscal year 2022 uh, numbers. On the defense side, there's nothing to report. They are uh, only working with Department of Energy. On the independent side, nothing. Their top five NAICS codes, this is pretty um, pretty, uh, pretty dry here uh, and um, uh, easy to understand. Facility support services is their primary NAICS code. Uh, obviously, the revenue has been growing. Uh, and the green is fiscal year 2023. So we're kind of reading this slide left to right. Um, and I uh, predict, uh, unless something uh, catastrophic happens, that they will probably surpass their um, 2022 numbers. Okay, so facility support services. Uh, again, these are just the same numbers that we've seen uh, from the last slide and the previous slides. Their revenue is growing. The pandemic did nothing uh, to them, and 2023 looks pretty bright so far. Okay, nothing, uh, I'm sorry, on the civilian side, uh, which shows up here, again, these are uh, the same exact numbers that we've seen, um, so pretty simple. Nothing's gonna show up on the defense side, and for contracts with a subcontracting uh, requirement, again, nothing will show up here. Um, and when we look at subcontracts awarded, nothing here, again, nothing here, and, uh, and nothing here. The top five subcontracts reported, uh, also nothing there. They do not have any government-wide acquisition contracts. Um, in fact, they may actually use some uh, for part of the, the R&D, but uh, they themselves do not hold any. So keep that in mind if you're uh, potentially trying to work with Sandia. Okay, so we look at the, um, the contracts here that, um, on the eight, these are yeah, eight years of contract uh, revenue by prime contractor. Uh, so we've got consolidated nuclear security, triad national security, which we are actually covering later this year, um, Ball Corporation, L3 Harris, and uh, JHU. Um, the numbers here uh, are in favor of consolidated nuclear security uh, based probably on the nature of their business. Uh, Ball Corporation, which is third from the bottom, has some revenue, but doesn't look like anything has happened yet for 2023. There, there still could be some time there because it looks like um, something perhaps, uh, maybe there was a, uh, the, maybe they were just one-time contracts. Again, this is where we give you the data, but you probably want to explore it a little bit further. Um, so both Triad and Ball, I would look into those because they had something in 2020, 2021, and 2022, um, and it would be interesting to see what happened, um, what what those contracts actually were. On L3 Harris, it's you know $50,000. Uh, I don't know that it's really worth your time to explore further there. Same thing with JHU. At the top, I mean, if this is really your business, if you are in fact a small business. And, um, and focused on Department of Energy and have something for Sandia and you know them inside and out, then I would look a little further than at the consolidated nuclear security uh, to see 
to dig into their contracts a little further because if you look at 2018, they start with 86,000 and they jump up the next fiscal year to 13 million. That's quite a leap. Um, 2020 takes a little bit of a hit, but they bounce right back with 109 million in 2021, uh, a bit of a drop in 2022, uh, and 2023 is um, declining as well. Again, this is for consolidated nuclear security, uh, but it would be interesting to uh, to see what the devil's really in the details here with um, with Sandia and its subcontractors is is really the the main point. Expiring contracts that are valued at 750 and above, none conclusions. So we've got some a uh, bunch of screenshots here just to give you a little bit more insight into Sandia. Uh, James Peary is the 16th um, director over at uh, Sandia. He obviously, as you can see on the right hand side, um, came from more or less within. He was over at Oak Ridge uh, prior. So I'm assuming that most of these people at the top um, probably are uh, all associated within the labs. Um, but they also have a, Sandia also has a board of managers. The names are listed there on your left-hand side. We just picked the first one. Uh, and these are in alphabetical order. So there is no, um, uh, we'll say, this is kind of, I guess, like their board of directors. So we just picked one to show you kind of what the, the write-up is like. Again, this doesn't mean that he is in charge simply because he has an ambassador uh, title. These, are, again, are listed in alphabetical order, but it would um, behoove you to probably uh, look at some of these folks, pull them up on LinkedIn. Do you have any common connections? Um, what other uh, work are they doing? Where are they plugged in that overlaps with uh, what you're doing? Uh, the National Science Foundation produces this master list of federally funded R&D centers. Um, I didn't want to do the whole screenshot here because we've got enough to uh, to show you already. Uh, but if you dig down, you'll um, on this list here. If you went further on the page, you would come. Uh, it's alphabetically listed. You would come to Sandia, and you would get more information about um, the funding that uh, they receive. Again, do your homework before you contact them, and this is part of that homework. Here are some headlines. Some are recent, more recent than others. Um, they've got, they have developed obviously some pandemic tracking software uh, that was earlier this year in January. Um, they do have obviously a mentor protege program that you can see at the top of your screen that just came out um, earlier uh, this week. Um, they've got some diversity news there at the bottom um, center of your screen. And then about two years ago, it looks like they were awarded a 25 um, million dollar contract for this uh, CSP plant. Uh, again, you may want to dig uh, further into that, and this may tie back to some of the dollars that we saw there on the subcontracting uh, companies. So I think there was one company that had a, a spike in revenue in 2021. This could be related perhaps to that. Again, uh, these are highlights where you would potentially then want to uh, dig a little further. Okay, so just uh, some highlights. This is um, more or less a, a cut and paste from uh, Wikipedia. So they are one of uh, Sandia National Labs, SNL is they're one of three uh, R&D labs under the National Nuclear Security Administration. Um, so NNSA is part of DOE. It came into existence um, through congressional approval in, I think it was 2002. Uh, so if you go over to the DOE website, it would uh, be beneficial to look at the NNSA and look at their budget. Uh, they have a small business page as well. Um, so really understand if you are interested in doing work with Sandia, understand the reporting structure, where they fall. Again, going to NNSA, understanding Department of Energy, um, and knowing a little bit of the background, which uh, we're going to dig into right now. So. Obviously, they are uh, headquartered in New Mexico at Kirtland Air Force Base. Um, their second office is in uh, next to the Lawrence Livermore uh, Lab over in California, and then they've got a test facility in Hawaii. Uh, Sandia has gone through various ownerships over the years, including AT&T. Um, I want to say I think Westinghouse. There's another slide on this, but uh, they're privately managed. 
uh, currently through uh, by Honeywell. Here's a snapshot of some of the, um, the enterprise locations. So you can see the Sandia over there and um, in California next to Livermore. They're down in Albuquerque. And then uh, for whatever reason, they cut off the Hawaii uh, third site, which is their test site. Again, it would behoove you to look at the NNSA uh, to get a little bit more information about the reporting structure. Uh, so they were established in 1949, uh, focused on advancing uh, national security. Um, they've got a variety of research initiatives. I mean, it's primarily R&D focused uh, facility. Um, they've got one of the world's fastest supercomputers, uh, but they, their roots really go back to World War II and the Manhattan Project. Um, they then served as a facility to um, repair and service uh, Army and Navy aircraft. And then uh, they uh, launched their flight school in 1941, which was the Bombardier um, Flight School. And then, um, then they became a Army um, Air Forces training installation. Um, so, uh, as I mentioned, um, that again, this was uh, the genesis of Sandia came uh, around World War II. Um, they first were, as I mentioned uh, two slides ago, that they had a variety of ownerships, including um, UC, University of California in 1949, and then um, President Truman moved the ownership over to, or kind of the operations, it's always owned by the government, but operated by private um, Western Electric, which was really AT&T to assume the operation. Um, and then in 93, uh, moved over to Lockheed Martin. And uh, in 2016, Honeywell took control, um, which is the current, um, we'll say owner operator. If you go into their website, they've got plenty of information about doing business with them. So they've got technology partnerships. If you click on the fill out this form, it's really um, a very simple form, name, email address, phone number, um, and, and just some basic information. It should take you more than five or 10 minutes to complete that. Uh, but they have various uh, types of partners that they work with. Uh, we're assuming that most of the folks that are listening to this webinar would fall into that top category of the business industry and nonprofits. Um, but I know that we do have some universities and other government agencies uh, that potentially uh, that occasionally tune into our webinars. So um, again, they've got a lot of uh, there's robust information on their website. Um, if you go over to the actual Sandia National Lab website, they've got their technology partnerships. Uh, as well as the prospective supplier dropdown. Um, and again, very well laid out here. Uh, what do they look for in their suppliers? What do they buy? Again, please do this homework before you contact them. Uh, look at the business opportunities. They've got their small business information, the registration. They couldn't make it easier for you. Um, you probably want to also spend some time on the uh, site that says current suppliers, just to see what information is there, what you can then expect. This we grabbed from a presentation that they gave, that uh, Sandia gave, um, uh, I think in the last maybe two years or so, the link to the presentation is here, uh, but it lists their small business program manager. This may or may not be uh, current, uh, and you've got some other contact information there for, um, for IT procurement, uh, nuclear weapons, and then uh, then they seem like they break their staff down into uh, acquisitions. So meaning uh, simplified acquisitions, anything less than 250K. Again, I'm not sure if this information is current. It would um, be in your best interest to click on that link and go through the slides and learn as much as you can before you contact them. But there's plenty of information out there as you saw. Uh, obviously a narrow focus in their mission. They are owned by the government, but operated by private entities, uh, meaning Honeywell. Um, and again, there's so much information about doing business uh, with them, but I would think that their supplier base, their small business base is pr pretty narrow and, and focused as well. Um, they typically do not 
uh, Department of Energy as well as um, Sandia are not going to be hitting home runs when it comes to set-asides because of their focus. Uh, there's usually just not a lot of small businesses that play in that space. So in the event that you are, this is great news for you, um, particularly if you are a small business. Um, so at, at times that can work in your favor because if you do have one of the check boxes, meaning your small women-owned, veteran-owned, hub zone, 8A, or uh, any of the other boxes, uh, you may be a little bit more attractive to them, but it's probably going to be hard to meet some of their um, requirements within statements of work or just uh, general capabilities. Again, as I mentioned a couple times, uh, you want to look at DOE and um, spend some time on the DOE website, Department of Energy, um, spend time on the Sandia website, as well as the, um, that's actually a typo, I should say NNSA, uh, to learn more about the um, National Nuclear Security uh, Administration, which falls under uh, DOE. That's all we have for Sandia because they're really, uh, that's that's all that's out there. So we, we can't uh, make things up. This is uh, the data that's out there, um, but there's plenty to learn about Sandia and they've got great information on doing business with. So um, spend some time uh, on that research before you reach out to them. We wanna thank everybody for participating. Again, today's webinar is recorded. It is found on our YouTube channel. Uh, or will be in the next couple hours, as well as our website, the SlideShare site will get you to the PowerPoint, which will give you those links um, that we uh, that we have provided uh, on some of these slides. Next week, we're covering Amentum, and we'll finish out the season on November 15th with GlaxoSmithKline. We're going to skip the week of 4th of July, but we do hope to see you after 4th of July on Monday, July 17th at the Kennedy Center with two to 300 federal government contractors. Uh, the registration link is there at the bottom of your screen. It's also on our website. And that's it for today. So we hope everybody has a great and safe Memorial Day weekend. And thank you again for joining us in the webinar series.